now next topic is you know uh, seven basic quality control tools see they are even though they say seven we can use as many as possible because always there are some improvements over whatever available you know at the beginning so now apart from these now there are new control tools also these are all very you know older one so what are those hey histogram graphs and the charts okay graphs and the charts Pareto chart, flow chart, scatter diagrams, cause and effect diagram and control chart. Okay, we have dealt this control chart separately. Why? Because its importance is very, very high. And we will see you know, each and every one here. See, what is the meaning of this? See, car, what is the meaning of this? See, in, the, in any industry, we are doing some process. In any industry, we are continuing some or we are executing some process. And uh, we are collecting the data. See, in the total quality management, we have seen that uh, in the analysis, of, in, in the stage where we need to ana analysis the problem, problem where exactly the problem is happening. So, how to anal analyze the problem by collecting various data and by after collecting various data, you know, how you extract the information from the data, how you extract either by observation or if you do manual observation or visual observation because this is the data then it is very very difficult so instead you plot into these different tools or the chart or different types of diagram then you will come to know what exactly happening there and you can take some decision of you know from that so first we will start with the histogram a histogram is a used for present the frequency data okay so histogram looks like this <clears throat> histogram looks like this see this is a rectangular bar here and then this is a one bar and this is another one like that you have a something like this okay so this is the histogram the shape is called as the histogram here we can specify the lower control limit and here you can specify the upper control limit okay <clears throat> So this is a bar graph. See, this is looking like a bar graph and used to present the frequency data. What is the meaning of the frequency data? Here, for example, I will take a ages of a different page people. Okay. For the example, I will take ages of different people, ages of different people. So for this ages, I will categorize this is a this as a from here to here, this bar represents 10 to 20 range and this is a 20 to 30 and this is a 30 to 40 range and this is a 40 to 50 and this is a 50 to 60 okay like that i i indicated you know i i made different ranges and when i collected the data okay so if there are in this in this range if there are some five people then this is the frequency what is the frequency here that is the frequency what does it mean there are five number of people there are five number of people who falls under 10 to 20 age group and here if i calculate it may be 20 number 20 what is the meaning of that there are 20 number of people who are falling in the 30 30 40 group age group in the same way here there are six number of people who is falling under 50 60 age group okay so this number this particular number is called as the frequency okay and here different steps are there so first first thing we need to do is what we did we need to collect the data for example the data is available for 100 people what is that age of 100 people okay first i categorized what is the category the category 10 to 20 age is one category 20 to 30 is one ca another category like that we have different categories okay first i categorize the define first i categorize the data okay and uh, after that i collected the data and sorted out into different categories okay into categories okay for example here in this case there are five number of people those are falling under 10 to 20 range like that i categorize the data and sort it out and then count the data for each category i counted that and then 
on the x axis i have taken the you know category on the x axis category and on the y axis i have taken frequency 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 mean number so how many people are there so for example here this is a 5 and this is a something like a 15 and this is a 20 okay this is a 20 so this is how i represented and i have drawn this so you you we know how to draw histogram now and uh, what is the advantage of this what exactly it reveals histogram so it reveals the centering of the process processing data see here the top, you know middle one is the center here so this is the mean value not even mean we cannot say it is mean this is a center value here okay so sometimes it may become a you know mean value also so from this diagram you can find out the mean value or centering value and uh, we can know the spread of data see how much how many people are spreading are going away from the mean value or the centering line that gives the spread of the data and the shape of the data for example if i draw the shape on this on this particular in, in histogram like this see if i join the edges then the shape is becoming like this so shape is either bell shape or normal distribution shape okay if you are not getting this particular shape in the histogram that means there is a some problem with the data okay you need to remember this and next one is a graphs and charts see here we can take various graphs and charts okay and we will see different different graphs and charts here see here why we use this we organize for organized and organized set of observations okay we will collect the data and after collecting the data by simply looking at it visually we cannot make out anything okay so instead you try to you know draw or you try to do something you know in the form of graphs or the charts then only you can infer something from the data see here this is a bar graph we have a bar graph like a, this is the item number one this is item number two okay so this is experiment one experiment number one and this is experiment number two and how much data we collected from item number one and item number two that means here we are comparing actually we are comparing item number one and item number two so for the comparison you can use either bar graph or you can see here area graph also in the area graph also for example the number of slices indicates the number of comparison for example here the item number is occupying this much the item number one is occupying this much space and item number two is this much and item number three is this much okay or if you are comparing only two you can compare the only two okay like that this area graph and the bar graph are giving and generally used for the comparison and then here we have a under chart like a broken line graph in the broken line graph you collect the data on a, on a plot this data then join those so that you will get the trend line you can get to know how the data is varying for different values and here we have another data graph that is a dot curve okay in the dot curve we also can know the either trend or we can know the cons concentration of the data or intensity of data see in this case this data is a you know situated you know be, uh, between these two lines okay from this we can infer some information that means most of the data is concentrated here it is not going out so it, it gives some information for us okay and then of course we have a pictorial graph so from in the pictures you can compare for a different components for example a component a component b and component c by drawing the pictures like this you can compare you know different graphs like this and then what is the third one Pareto chart okay Pareto chart also something like a histogram and this is named after the scientist of Pareto who you know talked about the you know distribution of who talked about the distribution of wealth unequally okay for engineering services general studies video lectures visit www.iesgeneralstudies.com For mechanical engineering video lectures and question and answer discussion visit www.getnet.com